Welcome to Plank of the Week, Talk TV's big TV show uh, that points out just where people have been going wrong. We've been off for a week for obvious reasons, but we're now back, and I'm delighted to say, in the company of Laura Dodsworth uh, and Will Geddes, uh, both of whom have been here before, uh, but perhaps not often enough. Let's kick things off, first of all, with Laura. Who's your first plank, Laura? So many choices this week. Mm. Um, OK, so I, I think I've actually planked him before, but mm. if I haven't, I should have done. Uh, Trudeau. Yes. And the reason Justine. I'm... Justine. Justine Trudeau. Um, there are so many reasons we could pick Justin Trudeau. First of all, I have to apologise, Mayor Culper. When he was first voted in, I quite liked him. Mm. His handsome face. Everybody his, liked him. His so-called liberal credentials, his press-ups on the desk. Yeah. He suckered me in. Since then, I've realised he's an arch-narcissist, controlling, yes. fascist, sociopath. Mm. Oh, that's no, that's well, enough I mean, reasons there. That's but... as well he became a politician then, <laughs> uh, yeah, because that's so exactly well the qualifications that you need. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> The specific reason I'm making him my plank is actually I am doing this on behalf of Canada. Mm. There have been 500,000 tweets in the last couple of days all saying Trudeau must go. Yeah. Now this has gone, it's gone viral, it's a, it's a great Twitter trend. And what people are doing is saying who they are, what they do, mm. and saying that their views are too extreme for Trudeau and Trudeau mm. must go. They're mainly objecting to the vaccine mandates. Yeah. You know, Canada's still living in this kind of viral handmaid's yeah. tale world yeah, where you can't there? go anywhere unless you've... Well, they've got all of them and they're they? all still completely straight. And so the thing is that he kind of projects this image of being really reasonable and he's he's popular. But Twitter trends don't tell a lie. And he's got half a million tweets from his home country saying he must go. Mm. So I'm voting on behalf of Canada. But there's a, there's a bit more to it than that, actually. I was chatting to Will um, in, uh, in, the, in the green room before yes. we came in. And he said, did you even see that um, Trudeau sang Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. on the eve of the Queen's funeral? Mm. I, this is just another example of his totally misplaced narcissism. How anybody, especially a statesman, can think it's appropriate on the eve yeah. mm. of the monarch's funeral in a hotel lobby yeah. to sing Queen. Was it a hotel lobby? Yeah. To sing Queen. Well, I understand, yeah. Sing Queen's trouble, Bohemian you know, Rhapsody. I know. But like it's a lot just of, not on. Like a lot of these videos that you find on Twitter, I always, I, my first thought is always, is this genuine? Yeah. You know, is it actually, did it actually happen? Exactly. And it becomes even more incredible if it's true that it did happen. It's just but, tone deaf. Yeah. It's tone deaf. Mm. Yeah. Well, he's tone deaf to his nation, mm. yeah. as as this Twitter trend is showing. So I'm going to I'm going to vote for him once. Canada, it's for you. Yes, I think that's probably quite a generous thing for you to do because who can forget or well, not forget the um, the truckers, uh, mm -hmm. all the people who uh, did he not lose an election relatively recently or lose some measure of his power? Well, he just didn't do that well. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the truckers' protest was astonishing. Mm. Yeah. First of all, the truckers are protesting the fact that they would have to be vaccinated in order to continue to work to cross yes, state lines. Yes, to cross state lines. Okay, yeah. and then they tried to clamp down on people that supported the truckers' protest. So people that had um, right. provided money. Yeah. Through GoFundMe, mm. um, GoFundMe kept the funds. That's the first outrageous yeah. thing. Oh, really? And secondly, yeah. yeah, I didn't even hear about. Yeah, that. they, they, bank, bas bank they accounts, basically commandeered the money, didn't they? They did. And bank accounts of the people who'd who'd sent money to GoFundMe were frozen. Right. So this is off the scale authoritarianism. Yeah. Absolutely. And if he's not listening to the people complaining on Twitter, he is truly tone deaf. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Bard right. being a sociopathic narcissist, he's probably unlikely to resign, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> These people don't yeah. resign, do they? I hope they? he gets voted out next time. I think he will. I yeah. just don't see he can. I do, you know what? It's funny. Uh, Canadian friends of mine, not one person likes him. Not one person mm. likes him. So. Well, I think, so. like you said, Laura, he started off as this kind of poster boy for, mm. you know, he was a bit like Tony Blair, you know, the young family. He's quite a handsome guy, you know, looks quite a sophisticated, Does you know, yoga. women loved him and all that. And now it's kind of like, he's, it's almost like he's shed his skin. Yeah. You know, the and lizard. now you see him for what he really is. Oh, shit. <laughs> when you say shed his skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's not a reference to a conspiracy theory. Really. But anyway, um, Will, who's your first So I'm one? going to go with something a little more, more simple. Okay. Um, so obviously we've had a heck of a week and being in my world, I'm going to be somewhat... A little bit sort of uh, weighted towards sort of security related yeah. issues around obviously the Queen's funeral yeah. and all the events leading up to it. And to be honest, the Metropolitan Police and the various agencies and multi agencies and security services just did a phenomenal did well. job pulling yeah. that one off. Uh, and I think also what we saw is a lot of responses to the odd idiot mm. who decided to either le leap for the coffin or jump over one of the barricades 
But the one that I particularly liked, which is so London, was the rollerblader. Yes. Who tried to intercept, obviously, King Charles's yeah, What was the rollerblader thinking? Well, the, the, the lovely thing about the video, if you watch it, is he's going, why are you throttling me? Why am I on the right. ground? When he comes around at a million miles an hour, yeah. round a corner where loads of local witnesses and, and actual people on the ground there said, there in fact was lots of signage saying road closed. Yes. But it, it's a, it probably again falls into the same bracket of my vendetta against cyclists. Yes. Who, who don't follow <laughs> the highway code, who just want to do their own thing on the road. Yeah. So rollerbladers, cyclists, oh, yeah, they're, they're all an evil to me. They don't read signs. No, of course because not. They the don't signs, stop at lights. Because yeah. the signs don't apply to them. Of course not. You, you know, know. As does road tax, you know, I as does insurance or I anything I saw, I knew first, I'm sure it's been going on for a while, I was sitting at some traffic lights, you know how they've got that box now in front of the cars? Mm -hmm. There was a, a cyclist The tax sitting, box. You yeah. Get yeah, that's what you can't getting us yeah, on. Yeah, sitting sideways on his bike. Yeah. Basically blocking anybody from going anywhere. <laughs> you know, the whole point of the cycling box is that you're there so that you can go a little bit early if the, if the green light comes for cyclists so that you're not in the way and therefore you can get away a couple of seconds before the cars. Not this guy. He wanted to sit there, wait until the green came, and then he would cycle slowly ahead uh, in front of, so nobody could overtake him. Brilliant. And you're just going, what are you doing that for? Well, I, I've always believed uh, I'll never find a cyclist who's going to be faster from the off than me. No. So why they're actually in front of the cars in the first place, I have no idea. No. You know, surely it should be all on the well, side. Well, it's obvious safer. that they've used some kind of ludicrous, um, uh, you know, scientific study that says if you put the cyclist at the front, then the car drivers won't rev off. And what is the point now? Really, this is about Sadiq Khan's war on cars. Actually, yeah, what it actually It's about does. his quasi-religious, socialist, mm. nonsense, climate claptrap war on cars. Yeah. He just hates cars. He does. Yeah. He's making it as hard as well, what possible is the point for people if you, to drive If you in drive into that box now, is it three points? I'm or not is sure. it a cost fine? I can't remember what Sadiq Khan sort of levelled it. Yeah, I'm not even sure if they've ever, ever actually got one yet, because they announced these things and then they turn out it turns out to be illegal. Oh, is it? I, I mean, I don't know if <laughs> it is, but I mean, quite often they'll announce this this new, you know, plan to, to penalise people for doing something which previously wasn't a penalty, and then they realise actually legally you can't yeah. enforce something that wasn't a, before against the law. So, but, get, but going back to the rollerblader, the, my point was okay. Let's say. He didn't see all the roads closed. He wasn't shot side. dead, isn't he? He was seriously I mean, lucky. He wasn't absolutely flat packed. I mean, he was right. quite well flat packed, yeah. but not entirely as I probably would have if I've been. Yeah. There. Um, because obviously we're in a heightened period that whole yeah. week. Anybody considering doing anything stupid mm. is going to come off at the wrong, wrong end. And yeah. if people thought the police were being heavy handed, good. I'm glad they were. Yeah, because wasn't there a guy in Parliament Square when uh, Charles, I think, came down, King Charles came down to make his speech in Westminster Hall? before the Queen's coffin was put in there, mm. and there was a sort of motorcade that came from Buckingham Palace. Yeah. And somebody ran into the road, yeah. as if to sort of try and get nearer to the car. And you go, I mean, you know, I've worked in America, as, as, as I'm sure you have. Mm. Um, you don't do that, because no. you go anywhere near the presidential motorcade, you get shot. Or get run you know? over. Or, or you get yeah. run over, they don't stop. Oh, I've been in parts of the world where I've moved with former heads of state or royal yeah. families, and if someone runs in front of the car deliberately, we're only seeing that as a potential hijacking or a kidnapping yeah. attempt. You're not going to stop. We're right? not going to stop. We're going to run over them. Yeah. End of. So yeah. if the rollerbladers that would be that would be your plank, I mean, in a way, the police and the security um, services have been like the heroes of the week. Absolutely. I, I think the whole yeah. event was really mm. beautifully yeah. it was. managed. I, I'd have felt so confident that there'd be no trouble, no terror attacks, just nothing to worry about yeah. in London last week. Well, we had all the police of the whole country plus private security firms, yeah. on, you know, on, on the streets And of they've London, actually so said that the, 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 the crime actually went down as well. Yeah. I'm not yeah. surprised. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, when I, I saw the, the procession um, from South Kensington, and as I walked back, every single police officer I walked past there said, you know, thank you very much, you know, and mm. they were so grateful for it. But also a few of the serial commanders and a, a few of the more senior bots, I just said, I, I bet you're breathing out now. And, and they literally mm. were, you know, mm. the fact that it had actually gone with that event is astounding. Yeah, yeah, it really is extraordinary. Obviously the show, this show will be kind of peppered with different stories about um, the week that was and the 10 yeah. days mm. of mourning, I suppose, that was. But we, I mean, I think we can we can say that we've already said it that it was an amazing event and yeah. it was an incredible period of time just for for the country. But my two uh, planks go into one uh, today. My first nominee because uh, it's also related, of course, to 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 the royal doings. Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield, oh. um, who are in all sorts of trouble um, mm. with the general public, who have seen them as you know 
trying to jump a queue. They say they didn't jump a queue, but basically they were seen um, when the Queen's coffin was inside Westminster Hall. There were two queues, effectively. There were the people who had queued up sometimes for 10 hours, 12 hours mm. to get in. Um, and then there were the MPs who were allowed right. access sort in. Sort of VIP queue. Sort of VIP queue, but yeah. not really. I mean, and, I mean, you know, as far as VIPs and MPs go, I'm like, if you're an MP, that's your place of work. Mm. That's where you, you know, if you want to go in and have a look, that's fine. And, and I was happy with that on the basis that they weren't nipping into the queue. They weren't like, sort of strolling mm. past in front of other people who had queued for hours. But then there was the journalist's queue, mm. which was actually supposed to be for people who were physically working the story, if right. you like. So yeah. not just because, I mean, I was offered, mm. you know, a chance to go. Oh, really? Um, if I wanted to go, yeah, because yeah. technically speaking, I qualify for a pass and I didn't want one. I said, no, I don't want to do that. You know, if I decide to queue up, that'll be, that'll be yeah. my decision. But what I won't do is just go, oh, thanks very much indeed, so that I can say I've done it, you know? Mm. And obviously that's kind of what they did because yeah. this morning, this morning, uh, I've had to put out a sort of apology. They've read a statement out uh, in which they said um, they really didn't take anyone's place in the queue. She says the rules were that we would be quickly escorted around the edges to a platform at the back. In contrast, those paying their respects walked along a carpeted area beside the coffin and were given time to pause. Oh, None of the journalists and broadcasters there <laughs> took anyone's place in the queue and no one filed past uh -huh. the Queen. And then my favourite bit, we of course respected those rules. However, we realised that it may have looked like something else and therefore totally understand the reaction. Please know that we would never jump a queue. Mm. Now, that sounds to me like a little bit of a, a sort of, you know, save your skin apology at the end of the day because people are actually signing petitions to remove them from this morning. I, oh, I really? Think it, yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, but people because, will sign a petition for anything these Well, they days, will. <laughs> they will. But, you know, it's amazing how quickly sometimes these things can become... Oh, of course. You know, a but thing, and I'm not suggesting for a minute that they should lose their jobs. That would be mad. But certainly they are um, playing with sort of what I would say public popularity ratings by doing things like this. I think that's the key point. The thing is, in a way, this is a non-story because, mm. sure, they're not hard news journalists, but they do film one of the country's most popular TV yeah. programmes. So if they were there filming a segment... Yes. They were in the right queue. Well, except they weren't, though, because you're not allowed to film inside sure. Westminster Hall. So the bit sure. where they're walking... So, so there's she's also there... wearing a mask, by the way. Well, hang on. I don't think I'm not coming to that, Mike. You know <laughs> I'm going to bring that up. But if they were if they were their filming segment, if, mm. if a segment transpires next week, then, you know, fair enough, they were doing their job. But they are playing a game with popularity. Yeah. You know, look at how David Beckham's been lauded for yes. queuing all night. As any, PR for him. As any, right, well, great PR for him. And, and maybe that's part of the calculation. Now they've really missed a trick. They've thought that they're so important, mm. you know, with their daytime TV programme that they, you know, they can get away with this. But they really did risk mm. trading on public popularity. Yeah. And it's very clear that they're not actually, if they are filming something, yeah. they're trying to look more solemn than they really would otherwise look. Yeah. But they're clearly not filming something in that particular section because you can't film there. Right, And so people's backlash has been, well, sorry, what you're saying doesn't make any sense because if you were filming something, you would have filmed it outside. Mm. So you wouldn't have had to be inside. And also it doesn't help mm. their cause that Susanna Reid, um, who's also on ITV, who does Good Morning Britain, queued up. Yeah. Didn't do what they did. Right. Didn't take advantage of the, you know, mm. the journalist's sort of side door. Yeah and actually did the right thing. And so thereby cementing herself with the public. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, you can never quite be sure which way the public are gonna go on something I, like this. And, this, know, and I, this will be one of those weird stories where when it, the final demise of Holly and Phil comes, as it always does in television, yeah. they'll say, well, of course, it all started with the... Uh, oh, no, I think it started queen. before that, because you remember a few weeks ago, uh, and I think this is a, a wave that's now crashing into the beach. They started with that um, that competition, didn't they? The spin the wheel to pay for your, yes. uh, your heating bills for the right. winter. And everybody absolutely vilified them for that. So I think that was the beginning, and, and so it was, it was well, kind you know, of a I'm, bit. I'm going to go it was further back. Badly calculated to then you, go and do the visiting in Westminster Hall. Do you remember them hugging through again. polythene? Oh yes, oh, yeah. hugging yeah. through the other polythene day. a couple yeah. of years ago in the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Like, oh, we've really missed each other. It looked absolutely crazy. Yeah, but then again, we can all look back at 2020 and think actually we all went a bit mad. Well, I didn't. I, well, I, I did. didn't hug anybody. I didn't <laughs> yeah. hug anybody well, I mean, through politics. You didn't have far to go. I certainly didn't hug anybody. <laughs> no, it was no. a very, no. very small hill I mean, to go are, down for me. There are there are fetish clubs for that sort of thing on there. Oh, is there? <laughs> I mean, sorry. Really, Michael? Well, someone has to believe. I'm going to have to just take your word you're for the one it. That I have no it. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Never hugged but anyone I, through politics. Yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, an experience. Not planning to. I don't think I need to. But I think the apologies actually, like a lot of these things, the apologies kind of made it worse. You know, if they just. 
I don't know. If they, just own up. Just, just say, look, you know, good. we were offered yeah. the chance, maybe we made the mistake of, of saying yes. We were offered the chance to, to look at the very historic scene yeah. because we thought that was part of history and we were going to talk about it on the show. Um, and, and, we took, and we took our chance. We certainly didn't make anybody's wait any longer than it would mm. have been. And, you know, we weren't there for very long. But like, something like that. But rather than... Because at first they tried to make out they were working. And it's yeah. like, well, really, are you? And if you're going to film something then we need to see the film, don't we? Mm. I think it's a typical politician angle. You yeah. know, they do something wrong and then they don't own it. And I think if they owned it and they turned around and said, you know what, it was a dumb move. Do you know the other we thing We had that, that opportunity. Happened. I think people would have a great deal more respect. The other thing that happened... Well, their judgment I've, is off. I've just yeah. remembered just this. Yeah. Yeah. Other, and we can all make a mistake. The other thing that, uh, that I remember happening, I think it was, I can't remember if it was the first Wimbledon or the second, would it have been the second Wimbledon? I can't remember. Anyway, they'd been sort of wearing masks on and off in various situations. Mm. And then they went to Wimbledon together where they weren't wearing masks. And it's all that kind of, you know, nonsense that people get involved with. with well, if you, yeah. if, you wear, if you wear two faces, one for the public and one, yeah. and one privately, uh, uh, at some point the mask slips. Yeah. So honesty is always the best policy. Yes, and, indeed. And, and the whole response doesn't really smell of honesty. It but really that'd be doesn't. three faces, the one with the mask as well. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what sort of mask you're wearing. So <laughs> who's your second okay, well, nominee? Um, so while we are talking about a variety of stories again today and we're not just you know on on the queen's death and and the funeral there is something that i want to bring up that came out of the funeral because when um justin welby the archbishop of Can canterbury made a couple of points in his sermon i was really i was really struck by them actually i found two comments to be quite inappropriate um, in one, he contrasted the um, service of the Queen with those who cling on to power. Yeah. Now, we all know what he means. He Did means, you get that he was having a go at Boris Johnson there? Yeah, I, I, would infer, yeah. I would infer that he's talking about Boris Johnson. Mm. Now, if I infer that, and I, I don't listen to many of his sermons, I'll be honest, I expect a lot of people took the same inference. Well, I thought and immediately he, of that. He will have too. written it carefully, yeah. and it will have been and it will have been edited and approved and gone through mm. other people, and they still thought that was okay. Yeah. That, for me, is um, another example of Justin Welby sticking his nose in politically yeah. in a way that is not appropriate. No. There have been so many of these it's examples Certainly not on that year. occasion. Not on that occasion. Yeah. It's the very last time to make a political point. Mm, yeah. He could have talked about the Queen's service, her reign, the role of monarchs, without drawing comparisons to our own contemporaneous political mm. leaders. But, you know, he's done this so many times. He's really got formed. Do you remember he said that um, the Rwanda refugee plan was in opposition to God? Yeah. Well, I know he's the Archbishop of Canterbury. He can't really speak for God. He really can't. Mm. Um, he he's also, also said the vaccine. Yeah. He said that it was immoral for mm. people not to be vaccinated, and he was puzzled mm -hmm. by it. Now, as a man of the cloth, he will know there are people that take a principled stand of individual conscientious mm. objection because all of the vaccines were researched and developed with replicated cell lines from aborted fetus mm. cells. Now, although the church might say, we think it's okay, someone could take a principled stand against it if they wish. He should be able to get yes. that. And if he can't, as the archbishop, this is a real problem. Do you remember when he also said that he'd um, got rid of his diesel car to fight the climate yeah. crisis? Not thinking that almost everything he buys in a supermarket has been brought yeah, to him courtesy of diesel. Yeah. So I, I, I find his political trinkering to be unnecessary and it was the worst possible implication for it. And then one more thing, something that really made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up actually. He talked about death being the door to glory. Mm. And this is the man who um, led the church in closing its doors at Easter at the beginning of the mm. pandemic. So I don't think he's got any place talking no. about doors and death and I'm glory. Sure, I'm pretty sure he's also said something to the effect of being, you know, voting Tory is ungodly as well. You know, oh, really? It wouldn't like, surprise me. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. Because he's in that kind of champagne socialism area, isn't yeah. it? Where, you know, Labour, everything Labour does is good and everything the Tories do is bad because somehow, you know, Jesus would have voted Labour. It's all that kind of nonsense, really? you know. I, I really don't pay much heed to anything he says. Man, but but he's, yeah. the lead, he's, you know, he's the Archbishop of Country. Now, if I was writing a sermon for him, mm. I would tell him that he should stay above politics as much as the Queen did. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the lesson that he should draw yeah. from the Queen. That's a fair point. Stay above point. politics. Yeah, absolutely, it's a fair point. And you know, there's all kinds of criticisms that you could lay at the at the table of the Church of England, not least some of the 
uh, slightly less than, shall we say, ethical investments they had up until fairly recently. I don't even know if they've changed them, but they had an awful lot of investments in property. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. they're the third or No different to the Roman I Catholic Church, though. No, they're the third or fourth different, uh, or third or fourth biggest property owner in Britain. Yep. You know, they, they invest in all sorts of, um, you know, fossil fuel companies. I think they might have stopped that now, but for a long time, while they were preaching, you know, let's all, you know, go green and save the planet. Yeah. You know, their, their, their investment fund, which is huge, by yeah. the way, as you can yeah, imagine. Yeah, enormous. Was all over the place into all kinds of things like Rio Tinto zinc and you know nothing wrong with that yeah but don't preach to the converted as it were and no. tell them all that it's all wrong then again they yeah I mean they probably might use the excuse that whichever hedge fund they've they've invested in or the investment fund yeah. or the investment fund managers are diversifying their investments into various different things to get them the best return and probably they didn't analyze the origins of those investments. No, they, can't, they can't get away with that because even I, at my little low level I'm at, I get asked by my guy who... Yeah. You do, you do, you get asked do you wish, questions do you about wish your to ESG be, inclination. Yeah, do you wish to, yeah. to, 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 to uh, you, do you want to be an ethical investor? Oh, you see, I'm I not as rich no. as you, Mike, so... I will say no, <laughs> can't afford it. But you know, I, I would have no problem with them investing in fossil fuels. Fossil yeah. fuels have created the wealth, the higher living standards and the modernity yeah. and the prosperity of this country. Yeah. That's not my, that's yeah. not my also, problem. Also, they make a lot of money. My problem with him is dropping little political bombs in to a sermon at the Queen's him, funeral. Definitely. Yeah, no, Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Who's your second one? All right, so my second one, again, very royal related. Yes. Um, and uh, obviously applies to, to last week, is the rather vocal anti-monarchist and anti-royalist yeah. who sort of emerged, whether that be shouting at Prince Andrew, which generally I wouldn't probably be opposed to, but I think there's a time and a place Not for then. it. No. Um, and I think the way that they turned up for protest in uh, the Palace of Westminster yeah. and uh, the Celtic fans, yeah, which was uh, which even when it was came to the, the Her Majesty's um, one minute silence, mm. the uh, the club decided they were going to actually change that into clapping. Yeah, and uh, they couldn't even manage that. They couldn't even manage that because then the chants from the from the from the crowd were, uh, "If you hate the Queen, clap your hands." Yeah, um, and it's just. Read the room, really? Is this it's the time to un- really yeah. start doing it? I mean, fine. It's unseemly. everyone's entitled to their 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 um, their opinions, but you know, I am a royalist. I am a monarchist. You know, I'm I'm very pro both of them. But ultimately, yeah, I mean, more scuffles you saw, and even when I was doing risk assessments of what potential threats could emerge mm. during the whole week, most of it was probably more about members of the general public turning on each other, yeah. uh, and probably anti-monarchists. And it's just like read the room, yeah. read the room, guys. Now is not the time to do it. No, and I think that you know um, there was all sorts of different things. There was meant to be a silent protest in Wales when when King Charles went to to Wales to Cardiff Castle. It turned into a sort of a booing event where not that many people did it because you couldn't quite hear them, but they were doing it. I know, Laura, you've got a different view of this, that you think people should be allowed to do whatever. I just think it was, you Excuse know. Excuse me, I've never said people <laughs> should be allowed to do whatever. If you're going to put words into my mouth, don't put those words in. Okay, over. then, I'll put some different words into your mouth, you shall I? You can try. Okay, well, you have said on my very show um, that you believe that they had the right to protest and that they had the right to protest at that time, didn't you? Um, I think they should be permitted their lawful right to protest, yes. Now, the thing is about people booing King Charles, he's just going to have to suck that up. He's there in a constitutional capacity. Mm. If he's not popular and they boo, well, so if he's, yeah, at, he's not uh, the first but king. But not if he's at his own mother's um, funeral or, or, or mourning period shortly after she just died. I find it distasteful yeah, and too. I wouldn't do it and I wouldn't protest. Yeah on the streets of London as the Queen's coffin goes past or as Prince Andrew goes past, it wouldn't be for me. I pulled up people I know for making jokes about the Queen on that day. I've spoken publicly about the revolting, bitter, anti-British and anti royalist commentary in some of the New York, uh, some of the New York Post, the US the New York media, Times. especially yeah, New York Times. the New York Times, Times. not the New York Post, you yeah. know, the New York Times, let's say the blame yeah. at the yeah, door yeah, yeah. of the right British yeah. hating newspaper, yeah. that one, the paper of record that hates this country. Mm. And I think that's thoroughly distasteful. However, people must have the right to protest. I agree. Because they, agree. let me just say, they weren't in somebody's funeral parlour, they didn't go into private spaces, they were on the streets of our cities. So 
Once it becomes about inciting hatred and violence, that would be different. If it would be a threat to um, security, that would be different. But if somebody wants to hold up a placard saying, not my king, for example, I think they really should be permitted to do so. Don't get do me wrong. So. I think they're entitled to do so. However, I think it is about you still doing your plank, protest you? in a sensible way. And I think doing it in a sensible way where you're communicating your message to a potentially receptive audience, doing it within a crowd of people who are very pro-royal, who are there with sense sentiment um, is only insightful. And I think in terms of inciting violence, you saw certainly some of the reactions by members of the, the, the public. I think that's no, the, you're talking I think about offence and not inciting violence. And we have to be very careful. Sorry, not, inciting what? They would incite offence, not violence. Well, no, they could incite offence. Saying, saying my, not one, my king one, one, is offensive. One is potentially a pathway well, to the second. Then you must be very careful you don't go down the path of, say, the morality police in mm. Iran, which will be my plank in a moment. Right. Because we... We mustn't construct laws and have police um, that are designed to prevent offence. No, we're not, Otherwise, no, we're not saying we'll that say, in the slightest. No, we'll having say. operated in countries where there is religious police and having been there, and you have to be very cautious about what you say, um, where no free process of uh, protest is, uh, is available to individuals, I totally agree. But this is totally different. What you have is people running at a very high sentiment who are very pro-royal, who are there within this congregated space to basically pass on their condolences or express their condolences. Someone coming into there with a totally diametrically opposed opinion that is going to incite hate, it's going to incite violence, it's going to incite... And we saw this. We saw this with individuals who were shouting out negative anti-monarchist comments where members of the general public. Now, I'm not saying they shouldn't have that ability, but what they're doing is diverting police resources to deal with that situation, which is unnecessary. I mean, unless these people want to go and get their heads... The reason and not the, to protest isn't it. that you might divert police well, no. No. resources. Well, 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 no, but it should be, though, because, yeah. you know, the people who from Just Stop Oil, for example, who want to have their point made and insist that they should be allowed to sit on the M25 and hold up all the traffic, actually, no, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. Yeah. And now the courts are likely to change the law on that basis that they can't do that kind of protest. Because for me, if you want to demonstrate, you know, you are essentially, you must be mobile effectively. You must be able to be moved out of the way. If you can't be moved out of the way and you cause all kinds of other problems, then it becomes a different issue. It's no longer about free speech because you have to be, as I've said before, responsible about free speech. You can't be completely irresponsible and have the same rights as yeah. somebody who's responsible. That's what I think, anyway. Well, I would agree if somebody had glued themselves to the road, they didn't. I think people that held peaceful placards did have a right to protest. However, offence sure. was tasteful, yeah. I found it. And the, the reason for that is that we can't only believe in free speech when we like what somebody's saying. No, no, I get how that. No, no, we're, 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 we're not saying it. that at all. We have to protect it in a more absolute no, way. No, I get that. Absolutely. But Will's point is not about the violence that they're going to incite other people to do because of what they're saying mm. they want them to do. Yeah. But it's because of the violence that they're encouraging against themselves because yeah. they don't realise that that's what's going to happen. And so that then becomes an issue. Yeah. You see what I mean? It's I being, see it's what being you deliberately... mean, I just don't agree with you. Okay, so it's, being, it's about being deliberately, de deliberately provocative in a time where people are sentimentally charged. Uh, you, you don't walk into a situation uh, where you have an impartial audience or you have an impartial group of people around you that are not uh, tilted in one particular direction and you're saying something totally diametrically opposed to it, then that's fair enough. People can have an opinion. It's like Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park. People go up there to challenge, obviously, various ideals or thoughts. But to walk into an area where people are mourning or are wanting to express their condolences and you're working against their emotive feel at that particular time, I think that's provocative. There are so many ways that this can be used for ill. Think about Cineworld cancelling the screenings of Our Lady of Heaven because the protesters there um, were so against the film that but Cineworld that said they couldn't... religiously charged, and I don't necessarily but agree it's still, with But it's still sentiment. It's yeah. still sentiment, even though it's religiously but charged. But they didn't have to and pay so to that, go in and see the film. That's a totally different but th matter. But that meant that Cineworld then just closed down all of the screenings of the film because they, didn't, they couldn't guarantee the safety of the people Fair at the enough. cinema. And so I think that we should always protect the right to protest. But, you but, never but, know when but, you're going to need if it. They had, but if they had, for example, then gone against what the wishes of those protesters were yeah. and, and screened it and then got firebombed, you'd have said, well, that wasn't a very smart thing to yeah. do. So I think you have to just be... You have to mitigate the risk. While absolutism, as I would say, is all very well... It, That's where the police should have been there. Well, yeah. Protecting the protesters and protecting the cinema. Yeah, they should. And the cinema yeah. should have still run the film. Yeah, I exactly. don't think I don't think the film should have been uh, shut down. But the, but the point is that it's a private situation. This is not a private situation. This is a public situation yeah. whereby, you know, if a film company or a film a theatre owner decides to shut the theatre because they're worried about something that dangerous might happen, 
that's not an imposition on free speech. No. You can show the film somewhere else. Exactly. You know? Well, it's two against one, but I'm afraid you haven't changed my mind. It's I still want even the right to protest. Uh, well, the right to protest, uh, your right we, to we protest all agree. can prevail. But we all agree with the right to protest. Yeah, exactly. If you start burning, yeah. you know, setting yourself on fire because you disagree with me, we'll be taking you out of the building and, and kicking you into the street. <laughs> we won't be sitting here watching you going, isn't it great? <laughs> isn't it I great? The right you know, she set herself on fire. Yeah. yeah. I'm all for protest. Uh, all for protest. Now, uh, somebody who hasn't been protested against yet is a bloke called Mark Fulbright. Uh, you may or may not have heard of him. Don't know him. He's um, he is the chief of staff of Liz Truss, the new chief of staff. Oh, really? Because everybody... Has, Everyone else got you know, sacked. A bit, like the, uh, a bit like the new royal household. They've got new people coming in, new yeah. people coming into Downing Street. This is a guy um, who has been um, sort of in the politics business for quite a long time. Yeah. He's worked for various people, including John Major, Tony Blair. He's worked for foreign um, uh, politicians who are trying to get elected. Um, however, um, there's a slight blot on his copybook because he's just recently been interviewed by the FBI, uh, who are interested in something he may or may not have done during a campaign in America in an election in Puerto Rico. Oh, really? Um, and they're suggesting that um, after they were asked to look into it, um, that he should be helping them with their inquiries. Now, it doesn't mean for any... <laughs> I want to know more. Yeah, cool. um, apparently he was made a formal subject of a Department of Justice and FBI investigation this year. In April of this year, the FBI asked the National Crime Agency and the Metropolitan Police to help secure an interview with him mm. so that he could talk about what he did. His company was forced to hand over hundreds of sensitive emails and he signed an agreement to cooperate. Now, you might say he hasn't done anything wrong, and that might well be true, but the thing that I find quite interesting is that Liz Truss went to the United Nations this week, mm. but she didn't take her chief of staff with her. Oh, really? Because he has got um, some prior engagements. Well, would, she normally, would she normally take him? Well, the chief of staff of a, of, an, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a politician would normally go everywhere with them, and the chief of staff of the prime minister would definitely go with him because he's uh, like her top advisor. Yeah. So he basically runs everybody else. So, yeah. you know, but it's a, it's a kind of... He has of a, a little admin to do at home, does he? He's found some stuff to do here that Funny would that. prevent him travelling to Probably New York. Probably not a now, bad idea. I'm not suggesting for a minute that if he had gone to New York, he might have been arrested by the FBI because that would be obviously uh, speculation. Um, but <laughs> it seems an odd thing to do, doesn't it? Well, I think if the FBI are interested in this, this could be potentially fantastic news for him. Yeah. Don't forget what happened to Hunter Biden when the FBI took some interest in his laptop. Mm. There was one article, then every other mainstream media article wouldn't cover it, and all of social media suppressed the story. Mm. So, I mean, I think you can't ask for more than the FBI being interested in your story because it's mm. the best way to kill it for a year. Well, maybe so. Um, <laughs> However, this is the bare it. bones of the inquiry centers on an alleged bribe by somebody called Julio Herrera Velutini, okay. who's an international banker and conservative donor oh. who lives in Mayfair. Funny that. Right? Yeah. Now, he allegedly promised Puerto Rico's governor $300,000 for a re-election campaign if she sacked the financial regulator. I think quite that's quite true, reasonable, actually. I mean, yeah. you've been involved in some dirty dealings in your time. <laughs> Allegedly, Allegedly, Michael. Um, <laughs> Allegedly. $300,000 does sound quite... But there is a criminal indictment. Um, so this guy apparently is not eligible to donate to a US election because he's not a US citizen. Fair enough. Um, so, you know, but it's all a bit sort of... The money was paid to CT Group, which is that lobbying firm founded by Sir Linton Crosby. Yeah. Mm. So there's a lot going on here. Yeah. Just seems to me. So I just yeah. to mark this guy's card to say, you know, we we got our eyes on you. Well, mark the, the, Fulbrook. Okay, so the interesting parts so of your story. So you're a bit of a there, plank, I'm afraid. The, the interesting parts of your story is not only the Metropolitan Police, but the National Crime Agency. Yeah. And you know when it's National Crime Agency, this is kind of another level. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. Yes. I mean that. Yes, I highly think... likely he may have been um diverted at JFK, mm. you know, or Newark, whichever airport Possibly he came so. into. And I mean, yeah. it may well be that, that he does have regular reasons for not going. But, but the do. thing is, yeah. there are these interesting, I find it quite an interesting area that not many, body, not many people know about. There are yeah. these kind of, you know, election-based companies. They're sort of strategists, mm. they're PR men. Wow. They're the, the men they in They don't want literally... everyone to know about them, no. do they? That's they're the, the men in grey suits. It's supposed to be dark and secret. But yeah, but they also, they're all over the world, which is yeah. interesting. You know, they, they, they cover elections in Puerto Rico, they cover elections in Africa, they cover elections in, uh, you know, the Middle East, they cover elections in uh, Australia, in, in Central America. You know, it's a, it's a sort of an odd world that we know very little about. Mm. So, which brings us to your third nomination. My third nomination is, um, it's going to be a whole police force. It's the morality police mm. in Iran. For the arrest, uh, detainment and 
what is reported to be the beating and killing of a 22-year-old woman called Marsa Amini. So Iran brought in the hijab as mandatory in 1979 and ever since women have been protesting their right to not wear the hijab. I've been following a hashtag on Twitter to my shame, it's all I've been doing for years called My Stealthy Freedom, mm. where women will um, take their hijab off in public, they film themselves and they share the, the clips on social media. You know, they're really risking their lives to really protest. Risking, yeah. um, so presumably um, Amini wasn't wearing her hijab correctly because she was arrested. Apparently, as she was put in the van, witnesses saw her being beaten, but the police have a different account of the matter. They say that um, she was even joking in the van and she offered no argument or resistance. I expect she wouldn't have offered much argument while she was being beaten around the head mm. because CT scans show that um, bruising on her face was consistent with beating, her skull was fractured and she had a hemorrhage in the brain. Yeah. So it's a really, really sad story and one that was um, somewhat lost in the news last week, obviously with all the mourning for the Queen. Yeah. So this is the death of a young woman, not an elderly woman, who's been killed by all accounts by the police. Now, obviously the true details haven't really emerged. We don't know if they ever will, because are they going to confess to yeah. this? But the um, the head of the Moral Security Police has uh, been suspended, which would, you know, I think we can infer there's some guilt conveyed upon him if he's been suspended. Mm. Um, and it's not the only time it's happened. You know, other women have reported being beaten by the police um, and also being forced to apologize on TV um, it's it's a despicable regime. Mm. It's a despicable police force, and the fact that it's called the Morality Police is is Orwellian. It's like something out of The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. So there isn't one person I can name as my plank, but I was so struck, so sickened by this horrible story that I'm going to make the whole of the Greater Tehran Police and the Morality mm. Police branch my plank of the week. It is an awful name, isn't it? The Morality Police. Yeah, well, uh, having having been out in that part of the world quite a bit for work, um, there are various religious polices and morality polices in various different countries. Mm. I won't name any, just in case uh, I'm maybe going back there soon. <laughs> I don't want to be uh, a guest in one of their special facilities yeah. um, again. And um, yeah, it is, it's bizarre that you have this two-tiered police force. You have this regular sort of police force, law enforcement that mm. you would see anywhere. And then there's this kind of religious police that almost make up the rules as they go mm. along. And the subjugation of women, particularly, uh, is just absolutely horrific. It, it's, 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 it's mad. But uh, I do love one particular anecdote from the time, obviously, of uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth when she was alive, that apparently when she had King Saud from Saudi Arabia mm. come over, and he came up to Balmoral, and they, he came over to the Defender, you know, the, uh, the, the car, obviously, that they were going to drive in for the day. And Her Majesty was sat at the driving wheel, at the, the steering wheel, and she drove him, which was particularly poignant, seeing that no women could yeah. drive in Saudi Arabia. And apparently she hazed him by driving like a complete maniac. <laughs> and he got out the other end, absolutely terrified. Excellent. But, yeah, no, I agree with you. Good I mean, since her. the Ayatollah Khomeini came in in 79, yeah. you know, uh, everything changed. Uh, whereas, mm. you know, when the Shah was there, okay, there were many questions about the capitalism of that aspect, but it was such, you look at photographs pre-1979, mm. pre-Ayatollah Khomeini, and you look at such a cosmopolitan co yeah. a city in Tehran and mm. a cosmopolitan country. Same in Afghanistan, you know, women wearing oh, yeah. um, whatever clothes they want in schools, in libraries. Yeah. And it's it's such a sad situation now. And, you know, what they call these um, experiences where the women are arrested and potentially beaten is re-education. Oh, yeah re-education uh, sessions, which is such a horrible term for Horrific. what we know is happening to them. Yeah, yeah, it really There's is. There's nothing moral. There's so much more nothing beyond moral that, which about bring those, the tone right down. Which I, yes. Yeah, nothing which, more no. about those morality piece. It's, no. a, it's a forest of blanks. No, well, let's exactly. hope we never have any here. That's all I can say. Morality police here. Morality police Preserve here. the right to protest. Program, Mike. Yeah, Preserve. it could well be. It could well Preserve be. Preserve the right the to protest. Now, yes. Yeah. Now, before we, we go to your third one, I'm yes. just going to give you the, because we always have to carry one over. And, you know, you might not be I put surprised. network down. I can't remember what that was. Network rail. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to go with the NHS for a carryover because um, these are the people who thought it was a great idea, uh, even though they'd already booked loads and loads of appointments for people to come and get themselves sorted out on the NHS uh, on Monday right. because it was the day the Queen's funeral happened. They decided to cancel them all. Mm. And they told everybody that, well, it's a bank holiday and we don't really work on bank holidays. It's like, I mean, still, even now, we live in a time when people work all the time. So, you know, there's no more sort of Sunday trading hours, even though there are a little bit. People work all the time. Yeah. They work 24-7. 
Um, the NHS alone seems to be one of the few places that doesn't really operate much on a weekend. Yeah. You know, you go to a hospital on a Saturday or a Sunday and there's very few people there. Mm. Um, and now they did the same and doctor surgeries were closed, GP surgery. So people who had appointments that they'd been waiting for months and months to get yeah. are now being put back on another waiting list. And you just think, did you really have to do that? Yeah. And the excuse, of course, was, well, you know, everybody needs to have the ability to worship the Queen and, you know, Was that the her. reason? Well, that's what they I said. I mean, I would have come up with a yeah. better reason. No, they said... Difficult that, to get to. I mean, like, an awful, lot of the, a lot, an awful lot of the other shops that closed said the same thing. It was to yeah. allow their, their, not just their customers, but also their employees to pay their respects. And you go, yeah, but you're the NHS. I mean, you know. Yeah. Do you know, I mean, if nothing else, they could have said to their staff, if anybody feels really strongly that mm. they must watch the funeral, that they find the grief overwhelming, yeah. that they yeah. want to pay their respects, you can have a day off, but we will be running a skeleton staff at least yeah. and, and getting through some of the priority yeah. appointments. But I think they, they did some yeah, skeletal they're, type they're behaviour. Fast, they're fast losing support because yeah. it, what it looks like to some people from the outside is just a day off. Mm. And I also don't think it's what the Queen would have wanted. No. Because, you know, this has really sparked a national conversation about British values because yeah. what are the what are the values the Queen represented? Mm. She valued good sense, good humour, yeah. fortitude, duty, duty service. Yeah. So, you know, we keep talking about duty and service mm. and how we don't want this to be the end of a British era. I don't think the Queen would have wanted the NHS to no. close no. on the day of her funeral. No. I don't think anybody, if they if they pass away, would want anything to be disrupted. If, if anything, I think the Queen would have been carry on, have a fantastic time, celebrate. And this was one of the yeah. things I think you and I were chatting yeah. about last week, about, you know, let's not get too maudlin about it. Let's celebrate her life and mm. yeah. look at it from a positive aspect. And it could still be sad. But I agree you with know, you. you know, but not everybody needed to have a day off to watch it. You know, technically speaking, it didn't go on all day. No. But anyway, listen, it's, it's been and gone. I just think the NHS could have done better. So, um, your final I've one. Final one, Michael. So... Um, one of the things, again, which uh, prevailed last week, uh, ending up with many soft toys and sandwiches discarded mm. in Green Park and, uh, and around Buckingham yeah. Palace, was Paddington. Yeah. But ironically, Paddington <laughs> was also a little bit of a blockage on the it day was. in question. The only, only in Britain this could... Only in Britain right. could it happen, and, and only could it have been the trains. Yeah. And it was Network Rail who decided because, I don't know, leaves were on the line or there was some technical fault. Well, there was a problem with the overhead wires, apparently. Oh, was it? And nobody's quite sure what happened. <laughs> um, and even Network Rail have said, oh, we'll have to do an investigation. But apparently there's about 500 metres of these overhead rails, yeah. which have been basically shredded. Yeah. Overhead wires, rather. Which then prevented any of the uh, supporters, uh, you know, and mourners uh, getting out to yeah. Windsor from Paddington, which was the only way to get but out. But it's the main reason. Windsor. I mean, you exactly. could get from Waterloo. It takes a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. So everybody who turned up at Paddington had to then schlep across the Waterloo. I know. So, so Paddington, hero and enemy. Yeah. <laughs> in, I mean, it is... Equal parts. It is, as you say, ironic. There was also, was there not, some kind of mad rule in Green Park, where they asked people to stop leaving yeah, leaving sandwiches, sandwiches and Paddington bags. And not put yeah. down soft toys because, you know. <laughs> people were leaving actual marmalade sandwiches. Yeah. Yes. Great for the pigeons and foxes. Yeah. Pigeons would love it. Yeah. yeah. But apparently the they were worried it was going to be a health hazard. It's like, have you walked around the streets of London lately? I mean, you know, there's plenty <laughs> on, on, on the street which is not particularly healthy. But, but you know what I really liked, Mike, is it assured me that uh, my profession is going to be needed for many years to come, that if there are people out there who deliberately make marmalade sandwiches, mm and take them specifically for the purpose not to eat, but to actually leave in a park. Yes. There's always going to be a requirement for There are a lot of police. very strange people. Yeah. Out there. yeah, but people do strange things, you know. I um, think that's quite sweet, though. I can see why people did it. Because, no, I can't. <laughs> Laura, I look really like Laura, you're worried. Have you got, yeah. have you got children? You know, kids love Paddington no, Bear. No, just ex-wives, Laura. I loved Paddington Bear. And, you know, um, that Jubilee clip of the Queen with Paddington was mm. absolutely Oh, genius. I love that, yeah. It was genius. And so you can see why people are leaving marmalade. Yeah. Does it spring into I my know, mind also to, to, to take a teddy bear and a marmalade sandwich and leave it at Buckingham Palace? A bunch of flowers, maybe, from a forecourt? <laughs> but, you know, for me, some of the most um, lovely parts of all of the memorial activities were these really touching human bits, like her headscarf mm. laid on her horse, yeah. the corgis. Yeah. And I can see why people left the marmalade sandwiches, because it's really accessing this very human side of the Queen, because that clip with Paddington Bear yeah. was genius. And it, really and it was funny and very, people. very moving. It no, really it resonated. Because <laughs> people, I heard loads of kids talking on various, you know, because there was lots of people interviewing lots of children and their mothers and their fathers and all that. Yeah. And so many of the kids, when they were asked, you know, 
or what does the Queen like to eat? And they said marmalade sandwiches. So, oh, you know, you. it's one marmalade of those sandwiches. marketing mm -hmm. cut through. So if you make marmalade, you're in uh, clover. As it marmalade were. sales have at least been good in the last mm. week. Although on, of, British of commemorative economy things boost. left, my favourite one was definitely, did you see the clip of the woman who left the Lego Princess Leia? No. <laughs> no that was classic. It was <laughs> no, I missed that one. I think the BBC were running this all-night coverage right. right at the very beginning. Yeah. And they were interviewing people. And it was probably an ill-judged decision because there were people People obviously on their way back from the pub yeah and there was this one particular woman who said I wanted to leave a symbol of a powerful woman <laughs> and the interviewer said what have you left and she went a Lego princess Leia oh well you know she was a powerful Easter woman one's own. Not be bad. Easter Easter one's own. One. yeah I think that was definitely the case on Thursday night wasn't it where <laughs> yeah. there was a lot of people in town who had come to town anyway but didn't realize that the Queen had died and yeah. then did realize and then went to Buckingham Palace and then all and all of them were like and so when did you decide to come? Oh, we were in we were in town anyway, yeah. you know, and it was like, they obviously had a few margaritas, <laughs> but it was great part of the the whole pageant though, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. To you bring the crispy. once again to bring the the, the the atmosphere down. I'm afraid I'm going to nominate somebody who we never thought we would nominate, but he's already been nominated once this year, and it is James O'Brien, a oh, man whose name yes. I very okay. rarely uh, yeah. whose name I very rarely utter, just because you know I don't even like to think about him, never mind to talk about him. But the last time we had him on yeah. uh, Plank of the Week was when he decided to make a little speech about how his job was harder than anybody else's job and how he could not, uh, and no labour. Was he pushing his book at the time? Or? Well, no, not particularly. He was making out that somebody who did labor, you know, hard labour, sort of a labouring job for eight hours a day, couldn't do what he did. And he was exhausted by the end of it, and that you know he was mentally ruined and drained after doing a three-hour radio show. Poor darling. I mean, it was Poor so darling. ridiculous. He later oh. then tried to make out that it was all his, his kind of handlers tried to make out that he was joking. But he wasn't. Okay. Um, the latest episode involves our old friend and sometimes plank panellist, Mr Richard Tice, okay. uh, who of course does a show on Salt yep. He wanders into Kettner's, a place I know Kettner's. You know well. Yeah, I used to go there a lot in the old days. I haven't been there so much yeah, recently. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, but it's been sort of revamped. It's a bit trendy now. And obviously people like Richard Tice go there. Um, <laughs> and he was there with Majid Nawaz mm. having a drink. Um, and who should he see on an adjoining table but James O'Brien with two sort of head honchos from LBC. Yeah. And... Um, he thought, being a very polite kind of fe fellow, that he'd wander over and say hello. So he wanders over, mm. sort of puts well, his he, hand he's, a, he's a gentleman, Richard. He is a gentleman. Yeah, he's a friendly chap. And it he's comes, you know, you and I have had gents. these conversations yeah. where yeah. you can, you know, and Richard and I have had them as well. You know, I don't agree with everything he says, um, but we can have a, a, a conversation about things without actually falling out. Mm -hmm. Clearly, James O'Brien can't do that um, because he went over to see him and apparently stood up and his eyes were sort of filled with rage um, and he basically told him to F off. You know, not, little, uh, not once, but, but twice. Oh, really? A in front of these two rather embarrassed executives, one of whom apparently did a runner. <laughs> oh, um, did they? <laughs> and then when he, when he saw Majid Nawaz, he gave him an even harder time. Oh, really? He told him to F off as well, and then said something else, which I'm not going to repeat. Maybe James had had a bad day and he it was might a bit be, tired. Well, he's obviously worried that we're catching him. That's, that's what he's worried about. I think it's probably more than a bad day. I'm going to see your James O'Brien hand, and I'm going to raise you. Okay. I think, mm. I, can, I think I can double up on your reasons on. to plank him. Absolutely. Well, there was also a really strange clip this week from his show where he was saying that the, the length of the queue in London for people to see the Queen lying in state mm. was a deliberate manipulation on the behalf of the authorities to make the queue longer than it should be Why? in order to make the grief seem more. So he was basically saying that the way the queue was designed was a deliberate state machination to make it seem as though people are grieving for the for the for our dead monarch more than they actually mm. are. Now I thought this was a really interesting insight because somebody like James O'Brien, for instance, probably would have um, laughed at the hypothesis of my book, A State of Fear, that mm. the government deliberately deliberately deployed fear. Mm. Uh, so there are people who are against one sort of machination, but in form in favour of another. I thought it sounded a little bit paranoid, to mm. be honest, because I think the queue is itself evidence of the organisation actually working. In fact, what, what there was was a lot of strength of feeling. A lot of people wanted to see the Queen lying in state. Yeah. They came to London, which you'd built to monitor through other, other means, if you want, Google Mobility Data or something, and then they joined an extremely well-managed queue, which yeah. kept moving yeah. and taking her past, uh, you know, taking them past the Queen lying in state. But he saw that as evidence mm. of manipulation, which was quite strange. That, that is a strange... So maybe he's just having a bad take. week. I maybe think, he's yeah. having a bad week. It's a strange take. Well, I yeah. think It was very so. ungenerous. It's ungenerous yeah. towards the crowds, towards the Queen, towards the monarch, towards the state. Mm. It I was just, odd. I, I just don't see the... I mean, like with any conspiracy, 
conspiracy theory, and I'm not a huge subscriber to them in the best of times, but it's always, what is the outcome? What is the potential outcome or the intended outcome of that conspiracy theory? Is it to undermine the government? Is it to undermine that particular individual, whatever it might be? I can't see what advantage there would be to do that. Well, there wouldn't we be. We both know. No, well, there think, is, there think, is no advantage, no. except to elevate the idea of grief. But, you know... Um, but why does that need to be elevated? It, it, can be, it can be visibly observed in many other ways. Absolutely. Yeah. By the flowers, yeah. by the number of people watching TV programmes. By Vox, Vox on the mm. street, There's many yeah. ways you can observe that yeah. a lot of people watching genuinely... People queuing. I'm not a royalist. Mm. I'm not going to count myself as somebody who would queue, but I, I don't doubt for a moment that millions of people did care, did, did, care. And did want to but that was yeah. did thing. want to watch on and TV. And as, as people have said before, they weren't forced to do it. Nobody told them to go and stand there. They just did it of their own accord. And yeah. they wanted to do it, um, which I think is amazing. And also, I think for people like him who have this sort of, you know, almost, you know, it's, all, it's, it's this kind, kind of, of superiority, isn't well, it? Kind of to say that no, people in the queue were stupid. Well, no, and it's, were, but it's like a know, fundamentalist tricked, belief. Tricked, tricked, tricked by state exactly. hucksters. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm smart and I can see through yeah, it, whereas you this is the simple thing, people right? can't. The fundamentalism that they follow is that we're the clever people and you're all stupid because yeah. either you voted for Brexit or because you believe in the monarchy or because you think Boris Johnson's quite a good prime minister or you, know, yeah. or you voted Tory. Yeah. You know, so all of these things. And when they start to look like actually people do quite like those things, some of them, mm. um, they don't know what to do. Yeah. Because their narrative is against that totally. And when they find that the majority of people in the country actually don't they usually really return. agree with them, mm. I don't think they can handle it. Yeah. And it starts to make them go a bit sort of crazy. That's probably why he had a bit of a bark at Richard. Yeah. Richard. I mean, Richard, I'm sure, can handle it. He's got broad <laughs> <laughs> shoulders. He's a big fan. But uh, he wants to be careful about that sort of behaviour because, mm. um, you know, again, a bit like Holly and uh, Phil, too many of those episodes and people go, hmm. Very well, you know, it's what I was saying before about the public face, the private face. You, you can't keep a mask up the whole time. Yeah. Eventually it slips and mm. people will see you who, for who you are. That I mean, it's just simple good sense and good humanity to treat people in a courteous yes. way when you meet them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And don't tell them to F off. Be graceful. In public. That's it's not a lot great to be look. said for being yeah. graceful. There is. Right, so we're at the end. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now's the time we wow. choose. good choice. The one out of the three. So, Laura, whose would you like to choose, mine or Will's? I'll give you the first option. If I was choosing yours, I'd probably choose James O'Brien this okay. week, yeah. I think. Mm. Well, but if you are the kind of reason, mine, For the kind of yeah. reason that you, you said, that kind of elite, out of touch, lack of graciousness, yeah. paranoia. Mm. I'm going to go for James O'Brien right. this week. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So I'm going to choose yours then, Will. Do you want to remind you of them? Yes, please. Okay, so my particular ones, because I remember them so well. <laughs> You've got, would you like me to remind got you what they are? Rollerblader. Yes. We have the anti monarchist yeah. Celtic fans. Yeah. And we have Network Rail and Paddington. I think we need to do the Celtic fans and the, the anti monarchists don't you? Or do you have a problem with that? Oh, I think Laura has a problem with that. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't pick Paddington. I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, I... It is kind of ironic, though, isn't it? <laughs> it, is, it is ironic, it's funny. Um, I mean, it seems unfair to pick on the rollerblader. You know if I was picking, I'd pick one of my three, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, but, you, but, but, but I'm... I always, I always, I always do this bit wrong in your programme, don't you I? Do. I want one of mine to win. Yes, um, but all women who do this show I, I want pick, to win. I would pick the rollerblader. I would pick the rollerblader because I think it was narcissistic and, and silly and they were right to get flat pat. Mm. Well, unfortunately, you don't get to pick it. Then, so <laughs> I'm picking the Celtic fans. So there we are. There you go. So now you get to I'm pick... I'm picking one of yours. One of yours. Remind me of yours. So, so we've got you, the religious um, police. We, well, we've got the morality police morality in Iran police. Yep. who are beating women for yep. uncovering their immodest hair. Mm. Um, we've also got the Archbishop of Canterbury for yep. trying to drop a political point into a sermon at the Queen's funeral yep. and for having the gall to talk about death being the, uh, the door to glory when he shut the church doors at Easter okay. in the pandemic. Yep. And then on behalf of 500,000 Canadians who have said Trudeau must go. <laughs> yeah. President Trudeau of Canada. Wow, okay. I am going to go with the morality police. That is going to be my choice. Oh yeah? Yeah. I would I would I would go you for go that, that too because the death of um, yeah. Marcia Mina is yeah. appalling. The others you can ignore is kind of white noise. Yeah. It? Mm. Whether it be the Archbishop of Canterbury if you're opposed to his points or whether it be He's definitely <laughs> Trudeau, white noise, definitely. Trudeau, the, the drama teacher singing and Bohemian Rhapsody. Trudeau will go. He yeah, will exactly. he will go. He has but the been morality like police a, slightly different. He has yeah. been so on they get my the week before. Well morality police 
uh, James O'Brien and, and Celtic fans and anti-monarchy fans uh, in general, I would suggest, I certainly don't want James O'Brien to win Plank of the Week. Cause I don't think <laughs> oh, God, no. God, he should no. not get that accolade, right? I'm happy for him to come second or third. Yeah. Fair enough. Same with the morality police. I think we have to give it to not just Celtic fans, but everyone uh, who, All the anti-monarchists who did unseemly protests. Yeah. Not because they don't have the right to do it, but just because they have the right to do it and they shouldn't have. Yeah. You know, a bit like uh, when people said, uh, we had somebody on the show today, say, Mary Dijewski, saying we should have invited Russia yeah. and they should have politely declined because that's how diplomacy is supposed to work, right? Like, we should have given them the right to protest and they should have said, yeah, well, we're not going to do it. Yeah. But we'll do it next week. Yeah, exactly. Which is Read the I room. Think. You know what I mean? Read the room. So I'm not going to single out Celtic fans. No, I wouldn't. But I, I, will, I think it's got to be a blanket. I'll make it collective. Yeah. Anti-monarchists. <laughs> Laura's you. not you liking are, it. You are really trying to provoke me. No, do you know I'm what? not trying to provoke I'm, you. I'm outvoted. I'm really I'm not. Out, I'm outvoted. But it's for, not a competition. But, but, but for me, a revolting <laughs> police force beating and killing women for height. Yeah, but it's in Iran. Uncovering though. their hair. I know. There's not a lot we but can do about Iran. that. But it's in Iran. Still, my, that would they, still be my also, plank of the week. Also I voted for it, Laura. I you voted know, for you it. Well, yeah, you made a smart choice, I think. They also... Well, thank you, Laura. You're They also hang people from cranes and things, you know. But, you know, that's also in Iran. You know, it's not a very nice place, I'm afraid. Um, I think Plank of the Week for uh, those people who thought it was a good idea yeah. during the week of the Queen's funeral to, to, to uh, demonstrate how much you hate the royal family. Definitely in the wrong look for Britain, yeah. I yeah. think. Um, but we'll give it, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll give your morality police second place above James O'Brien. <laughs> he can come third. But right. thank you very much, Laura. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Will. My pleasure, uh, sir. Always. And we'll be back next week. We'll see you then.